Hello aspirants, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IS Academy. Today, 10th September, displayed here are the articles that we are going to discuss. The first article, over 70% child deaths in India are linked to malnutrition. This article is taken from the newspaper, The Hindu. And the second article, India UAE Inc. Pact for Civil Nuclear Cooperation. This article is taken from the newspaper, Hindu. And the third article, critically endangered elongated tortoise found in Aravalli for the first time. This article is taken from the newspaper, The Indian Express. So, without much delay, let's get into the discussion. Discussion. And before moving to the discussion, there is an important announcement from the Shanghai IS Academy. Shanghai IS Academy is All India UPSC mains open mock test going to be held and the registration is open now and the link for the registration will be given in the description. So, do register and boost your UPSC mains preparation. And without much delay, now we are moving to the discussion. Look at this newspaper article taken from Hindu, India UAE in the Pact for Civil Nuclear Cooperation. This article is talking about the Memorandum of Understanding for Civil Nuclear Cooperation signed between India and UAE during the visit of Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi to New Delhi. And during this visit, they signed the Memorandum of Understanding and that deal includes cooperation between Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited and uh, Emirates Nuclear Energy Company in the management of Barak Nuclear Power Plant. And uh, apart, apart from this Memorandum of Understanding, they also signed additional agreements regarding the long-term supply of LNG and that includes cooperation between Abu Dhabi National Oil Company and Indian Oil Corporation. In this background, let us discuss more about the India-UAE relationship. So, coming to the India-UAE relationship, India and UAE shares a strong bilateral relationship and that includes sectors of economy, energy, strategy and security and also diplomatic domains. And the high-level visits and agreements between the two nations further strengthened the bilateral relationship. And in 2015, Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Abu Dhabi and that enhanced the relationship between the two nations in the field of energy security and healthcare system. Coming to the economic ties between the India and UAE, UAE is the India's third largest trading partner and important export destination. And the, that includes cooperation in oil, renewable energy, real estate and food security. And in 2022, the two nations signed Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement for Enhanced Trade and Investment. Coming to the energy cooperation, it is the cornerstone of India-UAE relationship and the major focus are on oil, LNG, renewable energy. So, just now we saw the two nations signed long-term LNG supply agreement that includes cooperation between Abu Dhabi National Oil Company and Indian Oil Corporation. And like that, the two nations also signed agreement on strategic petroleum reserve that includes cooperation between Abu Dhabi National Oil Company and India Strategic Petroleum Reserve Limited. Coming to the defense and security, UAE is an influential power in the Middle East. Therefore, relation with the UAE is very important to ensure the welfare of Indian diaspora in the Middle East and, and also to ensure the stability in the Middle East region. So, in that area, both nations share strong defense and security ties and both nations are engaged in regular military exercises and counter terrorism operation the best example is operation the best example is desert eagle it is a military exercise between the two nations to enhance cooperation in desert warfare and counter terrorism and like i said the ua is an influential power in the middle east therefore it plays a key role in ensuring stability and peace in the middle east as well as in the indian ocean region and therefore two nations are parts of strategic grouping such as i2u2 that includes India, Israel, UAE and USA and it is also known as Quad of Middle East. Why the relationship with the UAE is important to India? Like we already said, first major reason is energy. Energy security because India is a developing nation with a huge population therefore and we are also working to achieve the SDG goals 2030 and therefore energy sustainability is very important and we already said that energy is a cornerstone for the relationship between India and UAE. Therefore, UAE is a crucial partner for oil and gas imports and uh, therefore India shares enhanced cooperation with the UAE in the field of renewable and nuclear energy. And the second important reason is strategic partnership. In UAE is, a, UAE is an influential uh, power in the Middle East therefore it plays a key role ensuring stability in the Middle East and uh, Indian Ocean region. And therefore, two nations are engaged in security, partnership and intelligence sharing. And the next important reason is economic growth. UAE is an important source for foreign direct in investment for infrastructure development, real estate and technology. And uh, considering this, like I already said in 2022, two nations signed a comprehensive economic partnership agreement to boost trade and employment generation. And the next reason is, and it is the major reason, that is diaspora and remittance. UAE is home to nearly 3 million Indian diaspora. Therefore, their welfare is very important to ensure remittance from UAE to the Indian economy. So, in this topic, we discussed the relationship between India and UAE in various fields. With this understanding, try to answer this prelims question. Which of the following is not a member of Gulf Cooperation Council? Option A, Iran. Option B, Saudi Arabia. 
option c oman and option d kuwait this is a factual question and the correct answer is and the correct answer is option a iran iran is not a member of gulf cooperation council with this we are moving to the next article look at this newspaper article taken from hindu over 70 percentage child deaths in india are linked to malnutrition and this raises biggest question about the ongoing india's efforts to ensure universal health and india's healthcare system because in the year 2021 in india 0.7 million children under the age of 5 died and out of this 0.5 million deaths are attributed to child and maternal malnutrition. Let us discuss more about this malnutrition and it is a global concern not only in India it is a global concern. Let us discuss more about this. So what is malnutrition? Malnutrition refers to deficiencies, excesses or imbalances in a person's nutrition intake. There are two types of malnutrition. So malnutrition can be broadly divided into two. First one is undernutrition and second one is overnutrition. Undernutrition includes stunting, wasting, underweight and micronutrient deficiencies. So stunting means lack of height uh, to the weight. Wasting means lack of weight according to the height and underweight means uh, it is the weight proportion in it is a lack of weight proportion to the age and the micronutrition deficiencies can lead to serious health concerns and coming to the overnutrition that it uh, it caused due to excess nutrition intake and that can lead to obesity and diet related diseases such as diabetes cardiovascular issues and uh, hypertension so this can result in high child mortality rate especially in the low income countries so the malnutrition is one of the biggest reasons behind the child mortality in the low income countries why there is a high child mortality rate in low income countries that we will see shortly so coming to the statistics of the child mortality and malnutrition globally 4.7 children under the age of 5 died and out of this 4.7 2.4 million deaths are attributed to malnutrition and in india like the article discussed 0.7 million death recorded in the year 2021 and out of this 0.7 million death 0.5 million death are due to malnutrition so coming to the economic disparities so we already said that there will be high death rate in the low income countries and there will be comparatively less death rate in the high income countries why this is happening to understand this we have to understand a concept of theory of demographic transition explained by Frank Notterstein so according to this theory a nations can be divided into three so this is how the diagram will look like so there will be three stages stage one and it is a stage of underdevelopment and stage two it is a developing stage and stage three will be there and in this stage three refers to highly developed or a developed stage of a nation so the population the demography of a nation will change according to the economic development of a nation for example in the stage of underdevelopment there will be a population explosion that means high death rate and high birth rate will be recorded and in the developing stage there will be a stability that means the the population will the growth of the population will slowly stabilize and in the developed stage the population will fall so this is proportional to the social and economic development of the nation in the three stages in the stage one there will be poor sanitation and the healthcare system thereby due to this poor sanitation and the healthcare system the population will be exploding that means high birth rate and death rate will be recorded and in the developing stage there will be an improvement in the healthcare system and the sanitation therefore the population will come to a stability and in the developed stage there will be high economic growth and development in the healthcare system and the sanitation therefore the pop the people will be more educated and the people will be more uh, you know they will have more life uh, standard there therefore the people will be more educated and the people will have access to everything therefore the population will be slowly reducing so this is the concept of demographic transition so this is the reason behind the higher death rate in the low income countries because in the low income countries they are suffering due to poverty lack of healthcare facility low economic growth and as well as lack of social development so therefore the the low the underdeveloped nations will record high birth rate as well as high death rate and uh, coming to the case of high income countries the malnutrition related deaths are 20 to 50 percentage times lower than the low income countries so through this concept you can connect the statements and among the low income countries high death rates are recorded in sub-saharan african regions as well as in the south asia what are the causes behind this malnutrition first one is lack of access to the nutritious food that is lack of affordability and accessibility to the food will significantly affect the health of a person and make them vulnerable and this can be due to underdevelopment or ongoing social or political conflict or maybe due to the poor economic management such as inflation or recession and the second reason is inadequate maternal nutrition that means the women's health are very important because lack of nutrition during the pregnancy will impact the child and that can result into infant mortality as well as early death and the third reason will be low level of 
female literacy and this can contribute to lack of knowledge about the nutrition among the women and the next reason is open defecation open defecation that is a that is a significant sign of poor sanitation therefore lack of sanitation can lead to increased spread of disease and therefore the people will be more vulnerable to diseases and it will significantly affect their nutrition and their immunity and the next reason is lack of immunization lack of adequate immunization through vaccination and uh, medication can affect the children's health and therefore it will worsen the condition of malnutrition and also will make them vulnerable to other diseases and the next major reason is income disparity like we already discussed unequal access to resources can significantly affect every aspect of a person's life not only health so therefore income disparity is one of the major reasons behind the increasing rate of malnutrition so in the in the previous slide we discussed how the uh, low income countries are recording higher death rate and how the high income countries are recording 20 to 50 times less death rate now we are going to see some of the initiatives taken by the government to deal with the problem of malnutrition the first major initiative was integrated child development scheme it is popularly known as icds and it was launched in the year 1975 to address the problem of malnutrition and also to improve the child development and the program provides services includes regular health checkup vaccination early childhood education and growth monitoring that is uh, the under this program the officials will monitor the health health workers will monitor the the growth and the nutrition of lactating mothers and the child and this program covers a significant portion of children and the pregnant women in india like we already said it will ensure regular monitoring and the healthcare checkups and the second scheme is pradhan mandri madru vandan yojana it provides cash incentives to pregnant and lactating women for improved health and nutrition and this program was launched in the year 2017 and a cash incentive of 5000 will be provided to women and uh, to get this benefit there are certain conditions that includes early pregnancy registration and antenatal checkups child registration and the immunization that is the the child should complete the first cycle of immunization and under this program over 1.7 crore beneficiaries have received benefits and the next important scheme is anemia mukta bharat it aims to reduce anemia that is anemia means lack of red blood cells in the human body therefore it will make them vulnerable to other diseases too and this program is aiming to reduce this problem of anemia and uh, with a special focus on poor income groups and uh, vulnerable communities and the strategies of this program includes providing iron and folic acid supplementation and deworming for children and uh, lactating mothers and pregnant ladies and the next initiative is portion abhiyan that is national nutrition mission this is focusing on reducing the problems of stunting undernutrition anemia and uh, low birth weight the program is aiming to reduce the standing from 37 percentage to 25 percentage by 2022 and uh, this program has also launched a campaign that is gen andolan it is a community based approach to fight uh, malnutrition and over 10 crore people have reached under this program through the community based campaign that is gen andolan and the next initiative was intensified home-based newborn care so it aims to reduce neonatal mortality through home-based uh, care by ASHA workers. Strategies of this program includes regular home visit, early detection and nutrition counseling. That means so neonatal death means death of a baby that is neonatal death means or neonatal mortality means death of a child in 20 day, 28 days after birth. So it is also a biggest concern. So this ASHA workers or the healthcare workers will make regular home visits and they will regularly monitor the health of the lactating mother and the child to ensure their nutrition and their health nutrition and their better health and uh, under this program nutrition counseling or education will be also provided to the women to ensure their better nutrition intake that's all regarding this article in this article we discussed the problem of malnutrition and the problems associated with the malnutrition and what are the initiatives taken by the government to fight the problem malnutrition so based on this discussion try to answer this prelims question the question is with reference to the malnutrition in india consider the following statements statement one portion abhiyan aims to reduce standing in children under five years to 25 percentage by 2022 and the second statement the integrated child development scheme provides supplementary nutrition preschooling education health services to children under age of children under six years of age and pregnant and lactating mothers and statement three anemia book the bharat focuses on reducing anemia in only pregnant women and adolescent girls so which of the following statements given above is or are correct option a one and two only option b two and three only option c one and three only and option d one two and three the correct answer is option a 
one and two only statement three is incorrect anemia book the bharat focuses on reducing anemia only in pregnant women and adolescent girls the statement goes wrong here it not only focusing on pregnant women and adolescent girls it also focusing on vulnerable communities including people from the remote regions as well as tribal population therefore the statement three is incorrect with this we are coming to the conclusion for this topic let us move to the next discussion look at this newspaper article taken from indian express critically endangered elongated tortoise spotted in aravalli is for first time so that is a group of researchers in damdama area is a part of aravalli found elongated tortoise in that regions and they are suspecting illegal trade of this elongated tortoise because elongated tortoise are mostly found in wet regions so it is first time found in dry aravalli regions raising concerns about the illegal trade and let us discuss more about this elongated tortoise from the prelims point of view coming to the features of this elongated tortoise the first one is size and appearance they are medium sized tortoise with the yellowish brown shell or olive shell and uh, there will be a black blotox in the middle of their shell and this is the major feature of elongated tortoise in their appearance and coming to the habitat they are mostly inhabits in sal deciduous and hilly evergreen forest and also found in lowlands up to 1000 meters above the sea level and coming to the geographical distribution of elongated tortoise they are mostly found in southeast asia including india nepal bhutan bangladesh myanmar thailand vietnam cambodia laos and a distant population of this elongated tortoise is found in chota nagpur plateau and its regions and coming to the behavior and diet they are herbivorous and mostly feeds on plant matter fruits and small invertebrates coming to the threats faced by the elongated tortoise first major threat is loss of habitat that is mainly due to the deforestation and the change in the land use pattern for agriculture this has fragmented the tortoise population and also reduced their population and the second reason is exploitation for the food and this tortoise are hunted for consumption large scale especially in southeast asian regions and this is one of the factors behind the declining population of the elongated tortoise and the third major reason is illegal wildlife trade that includes smuggling of the tortoise for pet trade and food and this is another factor behind the declining population of elongated tortoise and the next reason is used in the traditional medicine elongated tortoise are used for traditional medicinal purposes especially in regions such as burma and southeast asian countries so this is one of the biggest reasons behind the declining population of elongated tortoise in the southeast asian region and the last major reason is predation that is dogs and other predators are used by the local communities to hunt the elongated tortoise and this is another reason behind the declining population now we are going to see the initiatives taken to protect the declining population of elongated tortoise and the first we are going to see the international efforts and that includes the inclusion of elongated tortoise in the critically endangered category of iuc and red list and the and the second initiative is citus that is convention of trade on endangered species under this the elongated tortoise are included in the appendix second that prohibits the international trade of elongated tortoise to prevent their further decline and coming to the india we have wildlife protection act 1972 and it provides legal safeguard against the hunting poaching and trading of animals and wildlife and the second step is national biodiversity act 2002 and uh, it aims to ensure the conservation of biological diversity and uh, and regulates access to the biological resources and this is a this is an additional layer of protection to animals and uh, species like elongated tortoise and the third initiative is protected areas that is many regions of this elongated tortoise falls under national parks wildlife sanctuaries etc for example a population of this elongated tortoise is found in the chota nagpur plateau and chota nagpur plateau falls under the protected region and it also has many national parks so this is how the elongated tortoise are conserved in india so moving to the prelims question so try to answer this prelims question based on our discussion the question is consider the following statements with reference to elongated tortoise and the first statement is it is found in the low lands and it is found in the low lands and the foot hills up to 1000 meters above the sea level and the second statement the species is collected both for local use and international trade which of the following statements is or are correct option a one only option b two only option c both one and two and option d neither one nor two the answer is option c both one and two only it is found in lowlands and foothills up to 1000 meters above the sea level this statement is correct and the species is collected for both local use and international trade 
that statement is also correct so the answer is option c both one and two so with this we are coming to the conclusion and with this we are coming to the conclusion for today's newspaper analysis if you like the video hit the like button and give your feedbacks as comments and also share this content with your friends to make the competition more healthy and before leaving this channel don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive the on time up thank you have a nice day